introduce you to our players today. I'm Jenny Schiavone. I'm with the city's Joint Information Center. Um, we will have Mayor Michael Hancock giving you an update today on the city's response to COVID-19. Um, standing behind him will be Bob McDonald, right here, Executive Director of Public Health and Environment and the city's Public Health Administrator, uh, Britta Fisher, Executive Director of Housing Stability, and Matt Mueller, who is our Executive Director of Emergency Management and Homeland Security. Thank you, Jenny. Let me thank you all for being here today. I also want to give a special thank you to all of you. Um, the press corps really is the lifeline of information to our public. And you all showing up time and time again for us to give these updates is criti critically important for folks who may not have access to the internet um, or, or the ability to uh, navigate other platforms. Uh, so traditional means is very important, particularly with regards to our older adults in Denver. So I want to just share with you that uh, your presence, your leaning in and continuation and focus on this issue is very important and appreciated by all of us. We have a few city updates that occurred over the weekend. Uh, first, I want to remind you that our emergency operations center is in full activation and has been throughout the weekend. Uh, I want to thank all those city employees and our partners who have remained on post throughout the weekend full time uh, to help us uh, stay on top of these issues. Now, following the guidance starting today, guidance of the state guidance, I should say, starting today, all city DMV Denver motor vehicle locations are closed to the public until further notice. DMV staff will also not be reporting to their branches until March 26th, at which time they will resume processing any mail and online transactions during this time. We will be providing a grace period for expired vehicle registrations and for newly purchased vehicles that have now yet uh, who have, that have yet to be uh, registered. That grace period will go through April 9th. Um, residents can still go on the denvergov.org slash DMV to do their DMV business online. In addition, now is not the time to be evicting people from their housing. We are temporarily deploying, redeploying our sheriff deputies away from evictions to other areas of need within the department. In partnership with county courts, the sheriff department will increase social distancing in our jails. This will mean that we will not book certain low level nonviolent arrest arrestees into the jails. Now following new CDC guidelines, we are issuing an amended public health order to prohibit, prohibit mass gatherings of 50 or more people with some exceptions. In addition, we are ordering the closure of all restaurants and bars to on-site seating. Delivery, drive-through, and carry-out will still be permitted. This amended order for mass gatherings will be effective immediately and shall be in effect for eight weeks through May the 11th. The order for restaurants will go into effect tomorrow at 8 a.m. and shall be in effect for eight weeks through May the 11th. So again, the 50 or more people, gatherings of 50 or more people will be effective immediately and the restrictions on restaurants and bars for on-site eating will go in effect tomorrow at 11, excuse me, at 8 a.m. and will last for eight weeks through May the 11th or until you receive uh, notice before then. The order also covers all of the closures or not closure announcements we have made to this point and may change uh, in the future. Now we know these increased measures have an impact on people's day-to-day -day lives, but these are steps we must take in order to do our part to reduce people's exposure to this virus. With these increased measures, our primary focus remains on supporting our vulnerable populations who will be most affected by this and the service providers who are working overtime to help them right now. We are partnering with Denver Public Schools to ensure youth 18 and under continue to receive food assistance while schools are closed. DPS will offer free grab and go style breakfast and lunch to students at 11 school locations throughout the city. Dinner will be served in a similar fashion at 18 recreation centers throughout the city. Meal service begins today and will continue through Friday, April the 3rd. For times and locations, we invite everyone to visit DPS website, www.dpsk12.org. 
To support our neighbors experiencing homelessness, I want to first and foremost recognize the tremendous partnership uh, we have with our community-based service providers. I also want to thank uh, our host team uh, under the leadership of Britta Fisher, who worked, who has been working around the clock throughout the weekend to bring about solutions and, and uh, opportunities for our people experiencing, our neighbors experiencing homelessness. They are critical to ensuring every person experiencing homelessness get needed support. We are talking daily to our partners, providing overnight shelter, day shelter, street outreach, permanent support of housing, harm reduction, and caring for other basic needs like food, showers, and laundry. I will also say they are in the midst of negotiating with several area hotels uh, to secure rooms uh, for our individuals, our family, friends, and neighbors who are experiencing homelessness. They need volunteers, cleaning supplies, and donations, and we especially need, especially need personal protective equipment. If you are young, healthy, and showing no signs of symptoms of the virus, providers, both large and small, need volunteers to help. Denver, this is the time we rise up together to help prepare meals, distribute supplies, and to help keep our shelter facilities clean and safe for our guests and workers. And to reiterate again, we need personal protective equipment. Not everyone is able to volunteer in person, so a donation account is already established to accept donations to help our shelters and other service providers purchase much needed supplies. We have partnered with the Mile High United Way to make it easy to help. So you can just visit unitedwaydenver.org slash COVID relief. And our partners at Mile High United Way will take it from there. No matter how you contribute, the community is grateful for your support. Now is the time for us to rise up as neighbors, as residents of this great city, especially in need of supplies, uh, cleaning supplies, donations can be dropped off uh, between 1 and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday at two recreation centers in the city. The MLK Rec Center, located at 3880 Newport Street, and the La Ama Lincoln Park Recreation Center, located at 1325 West 11th. The city is working on multiple options to ensure that everyone has someplace safe and clean to go uh, if they need it. Again, I want to thank Britta Fisher and her team for negotiating with local hotels, area hotels, and we hope to have more information on that in the coming days. We are looking at the city's existing real estate inventory as well and other available facilities to ensure that we have enough space for supplemental shelter and activated respite care. We have installed hand washing stations throughout the city, distributed maps of their locations, and made them available on denvergov.org. And the Wellness Winning continues to distribute wellness kits and behavioral health supplies throughout the city. Now, with all the closures and cancellations, we know our local businesses are being hard hit and the effect that has on their workers and their families. We want to remind all of our residents that there are some programs that we currently have in place to help folks with housing costs and other uh, relief they may need. For example, the property tax relief program for our over 65 living with disability or low income residents. Our temporary rental and utility assistance program, which is better known as TRUA. Uh, it helps with emergency rent and utility payments for those who qualify. Uh, Denver Human Services offers eviction and rental assistance. And low income energy assistance program, better known as LEAP, offers eligible residents help with a portion of their winter home heating bills. There's more information again on denvergov.org slash housing. Several departments, including the Office of Economic Development and Opportunity, Department of Finance and Arts and Venues are working on supportive measures to help businesses to, uh, uh, with recovery as the economic impact becomes real. And we're gonna have more on this in the next couple of days uh, going forward. Let me pause for a moment to thank our, our city family members. Employees have gone through extraordinary efforts to make sure that city government operations remain uh, in place. Uh, and while we have implemented a remote uh, working uh, uh, opportunity for city employees, again, to, to help stem the tide of this virus, 
Uh, I want to just send a special thank you to our city employees for all that they're doing to keep the city functioning and making sure we're able to deliver basic services to the people of Denver. We also want to thank our grocery workers who are working around the clock to make sure that shelves remain stocked and uh, to make sure that our grocery stores remain open uh, so that people can access the basic needs that they have for their families. Just to be clear, our response to this virus is going to mean pressing our boundaries between where the city has controls and where we need to insist other industries step up and help us. Proud of how our city and state has pulled together to combat the spread of COVID-19. None of these decisions have been easy ones to make. I can promise you that. But people's response and understanding is what makes these measures effective and what will get us through this uh, together. Keeping these preventive measures, including washing your hands frequently for 20 seconds at a time, practicing social distancing, staying home if you feel if you've got flu-like symptoms, and with this new restrictions or these new restrictions on uh, mass gatherings, those restrictions do not include grocery stores. We'll make that very clear. If you need to go to the store, treat it like you're preparing for a snowstorm, but we encourage you not to panic buy. Not to panic buy. It is putting everyone in jeopardy. This is a time to show resili resiliency, and we do that by taking steps to mitigate our chances of catching the virus. And supporting our family and neighbors with what they need to get through this very critical time. With that, I will stop and we can take questions. Yes, Joe. Well, I don't, I don't have the, the, the data on that real time because to the mayor's point, this, this situation is changing hourly at this point. New information is coming in hourly. All of our efforts are to find the right balance and to stem the, the flow of, of this uh, illness. Uh, and I think that we're doing that successfully with, with uh, those things that, that the things that we've implemented. I wanna make sure I answered your question though. You, you asked about number of beds, that's changing every day. Um, and we are looking at and, and prepared for, even though they are, they're, they're not at capacity, we are preparing for the situation in case they did uh, become at capacity. We're not waiting for that. Uh, but I want to make sure I uh, answered your other question. You had asked about hospital beds and something else. And how, many, how many, at this rate, with yeah. the data that you are looking at, how many people in Denver could contract COVID-19? Well, there's really no way of t uh, telling that. You know, that this... Everything we're doing is to stem that tide. What I can tell you is that we have 22 presumptive cases. Um, are there more than that? Likely more than that. Uh, but we're tracking uh, the available data and doing everything we can to make sure that the spread is limited. Is it possible that this virus reaches so many people that the city will not have enough hospitals? Is that a possibility? You know, I've learned uh, in public health that you never say uh, nothing's possible or something's impossible. You know, I, I think that we are being very successful, very balanced with what we're doing. You know, listen, these, these, are, these are very difficult decisions. I want to stress that. The, the timing of the decisions that we're making are critical. Uh, not, and, and we have to balance that, not just with economic considerations and legal considerations, but also public health. If we make decisions too quickly, we could create other public health problems. If we close schools too soon, then children could congregate where, they're, where there's less oversight. If we close childcare facilities too soon, um, parents could be faced with putting their kids in a situation where there is, again, less oversight or people aren't as trained as childcare providers. So every decision that we make is about balance. And, and I think collectively as administration, we've done that every step of the way. Well, let me ask uh, Red to step forward and talk about that. Um, the question was about what we're doing to house people, um, to keep people housed. Um, so I want to reiterate two points on that. Um, one, we're in daily communication with our shelter and service providers um, to meet their needs. We need to meet those critical needs right now. Um, and including sanitation supplies uh, in order to meet the needs at our shelters and service providers. Um, as far as housing stability, you heard the mayor talk about um, redeploying 
sheriff's deputies away from evictions. Um, that is a step that should help with housing stability. I think also we have nearly $2 million available through our temporary rental and utility assistance program, which is another thing that people can access um, to get that short-term help uh, that can help them stay and remain housed. Uh, I don't think we have the authority. A, housing typically falls under a state uh, jurisdiction, so it would be something of the state. Uh, and most of uh, as you know, we don't own many properties that we're renting out, so there's private property. And how long will that eviction ban last? Until further notice. Mary Ann, what about the court system? Yes. There have been some modifications already with the court system, but uh, no conversations about closing them down. As you know, we have a responsibility to speedy trial, but there have already been modifications and some postponements occurring and some measuring of the number of folks allowed into the jury pool room already. And so we stay in close uh, communication with the county court, the presiding judge, as well as the, the district judge uh, in terms of how we'll continue to monitor and to make decisions accordingly. You know what we have, uh, particularly with regards to businesses, is Ashley in the room? She's not in the room? Well, I can tell you that our, our excise and licensing inspectors will be out monitoring, particularly restaurants and bars uh, with regards to that. Um, it, this is not about a criminal, criminal act. This is more of, again, a public safety uh, move. And uh, we, while we expect everyone to comply, our inspectors will be active in the city to make sure we're, we're managing it. Yeah, the question is whether or not we are considering closing um, movie theaters and, and gymnasiums, I think is what you, you've asked the question. Gyms of that nature, well, as you know, we already closed our gymnasiums. At least those are owned by the city of Denver, the recreation. The Soul Cycles, again, it, it, they will fall under the 50-person um, rule that we have in the city of Denver. We ask them if they're not closing, if they fall under that umbrella where they're, you know, not uh, – they're not going to have 50 people in the room. We asked them to continue to follow the precautions that we have laid out in terms of sanitizing rooms on a very regular basis, making sure everyone's washing their hands and uh, social distancing. At this point in time, I don't believe movie theaters. I'm going to look around the room to see. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Yeah. Do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, that, that's not explicitly called out. Yeah. Are, are we are we talking about that? We're talking about a lot of things. Um, and and for those, the, the, the order uh, does not specifically call, call them out. So there are no orders being uh, uh, issued specific to theaters. Um, if they can practice the social distancing requirements and sanitation, uh, we'll continue to evaluate that as time goes on. Now, having said that, two days from now, that could change. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that question because, you know, along with keeping everyone safe and healthy, that is something that this group, my team, talks about very regularly. We are very concerned, obviously, about our workers in the city, particularly our hourly workers and, and uh, people who will be in disproportionately impacted by the decisions and certainly the, the issues of, of the impact of this virus uh, in our community. Um, we're working now, and hopefully in a few days we'll have some additional information uh, with regards to how we're going to work, do the best we can within our means to work within, work with our businesses who are being disproportionately impacted uh, by some of the decisions we're having to make as a result. Uh, to our employees, of course, we are first asking our employers if there's, if at all possible, we're able to keep people employed, keep people employed. Um, that is, you know, as I've talked, and by the way, we're in regular contact with business. We're conducting conference calls. We are talking with them individually and with associations. And, and to, the, to the extent possible, many businesses are trying to keep employees being paid regularly. Uh, a lot of this, of course, will be impacted by how long this lasts and how uh, deep it impacts our, our community. Uh, but we're going to continue to talk to them. We're taking suggestions from them, and we're doing everything within our means to help businesses as, poss as much as possible uh, with regards to recovery and sustainability going forward. Mayor, is there anything specific you can address with restaurants and bars that are 8 a.m. tomorrow? You know, I talked to, I have talked to uh, several restaurant operators even before I came down here 
who quite frankly understood what we were doing and understood the decision we had to make. Um, and those, again, they're, they're under the, the understanding they're going to do what they can to keep their employees working um, as best they can. Um, we'll continue to remain in contact with them right now. Um, as this, again, this is fresh today. Um, um, this is a decision that uh, we're going to have to continue to work with them in terms of the sustainability with their employees and doing what we can to help them. But more importantly, you know, trying to encourage them to try to do whatever they can to aid their employees until further notice. We have some economic development tools that uh, we can we can try to buffer, increase, um, while at the same time managing the city's financial uh, sustainability. This is this is going to hit us in a, a very uh, major way, and we know that. Um, and so we're already thinking about how we can beef up some of those tools and deploy them immediately to help um, as quickly as possible. Yes. Uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to evade the question. It's that the answer to the question changes hourly. Um, I can tell you that they're not at risk at this time for running out of respirators, and they're prepared to bring in more as is needed. Follow-up question for yes. you. Um, there was a question asked about hospital beds. Mm -hmm. Have you discussed the idea of maybe clearing out uh, patients that are not critically ill to make room for potential cases of COVID-19? And are you prepared yeah. to set up temporary hospitals in certain spaces if we ever come to that? We, we are having discussions about all of those things. In fact, a, uh, a medical doctor from Denver Health and Hospital Authority is sitting right next to me uh, every day in the EOC. We talk about all of those things. Uh, in terms of preparing for additional space for those who may not need it in a hospital setting, that is exactly what we are preparing for uh, if needed with our partners in housing stability, Ms. Britta Fisher. Well, I, I think modified hospitals, I would say, uh, where maybe elevated care is provided. I, I don't have concrete answers for that yet uh, because that, that gets very complicated, uh, but we are working on that. You know, uh, the advice is, first of all, understand why we're doing this. This was a very, very hard decision because I know uh, who's being impacted. I, I absolutely know. Um, but right now, nothing trumps the public health and safety of the pe all people of Denver. And uh, we would not, trust me, would not have moved in this direction had we not had to uh, in order to begin to flatten that curve. And that's what we're, our ultimate objective is, is to, is to save lives and to save the city and to make sure people remain healthy. Um, if you go, if you decide to go to a restaurant or a bar, go, but always until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Practice good hygiene. Everything we've said, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, practice social distancing. Are you encouraging people to do takeout? Yes, please. I'm glad you, thanks, Joe, for asking that question. Again, we, we this does not prohibit um, takeout or uh, grab and go as well as our drive, uh, drive up uh, um, um, distribution or delivery. So where there is capacity and you could lawfully do it, we encourage that. Um, this is about, you know, one way we don't talk about keeping people working that's one way to do that um, as well as to practice uh, food security you know to combat food insecurity yeah. I saw another question yes you were emphatic about the need for personal protective equipment and volunteers. yes I, I can't stress it for first of all volunteers we're going to work to redeploy city employees as we are modifying our work uh, situation in the city of Denver and so some of our city employees will be helping us to fill the gaps on some of these challenges we have in the city two volunteers are are, are critically needed in in many aspects and if you have a favorite um, charity that uh, has an ex, you know external facing service that could be critical at this time we encourage you to do so if you don't have an idea uh, go to our website we have some information or go to United Way we have information on where you could volunteer but we need help in distributing supplies. We need help delivering supplies, helping people who need to do shopping and things of that, that uh, nature. We need volunteers. Secondly, the pro protective uh, equipment that we, uh, the personal protective equipment that I talked about, the PPE. Um, I just got off the phone with a, uh, I won't tell you who it is, but I can tell you it's a leading medical authority uh, official in the city. 
who is fearful that if we don't get PPE equipment into Denver, PPE here in the city of Denver uh, this week, and we're talking about in a matter of a couple days, all of our efforts will come to a screeching halt. Let me give you another example of why this equipment is so important. As we set up these new um, centers or opportunities to house like people experiencing homelessness and volunteers and staff are there to help, they need PPE to be able to fully volunteer to protect themselves as well as to protect those who are coming through the doors. And right now we have a critical shortage. And, and so, of course, we're calling on the federal government and the state government to get this equipment to Denver as quickly as possible so that we can do everything we can to serve the people in our hospitals as well as in our temporary housing programs. No, no, no. Yeah, no, the question is, are we asking people, thank you, Jenny, asking people to, uh, if we're asking people to purchase this equipment, this is the equipment. No, 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 no. This is, this is the government's uh, and our ability to make sure that every level of government and every critical service provider uh, within our industry and volunteers who are coming in contact with uh, fo folks who may be symptomatic or trying to serve people uh, have the ability to protect themselves as well as the public that they're coming in contact with. And right now we are running a critical shortage. And it's, so it's not asking people to turn in their equipment. This is part of our federal and state stash that we are looking to have come to Denver as quickly as possible as well as throughout the state but i'm representing the people of denver we need it in denver in the metro area as quickly as possible and i mean within hours uh thanks for the question the question was uh who are we trying to house is it unhoused persons or is it symptomatic um at our current resourcing levels, we're prioritizing, so we're trying to meet the critical needs within our shelter and service providers and those who are exhibiting um, those significant respiratory issues. Um, and then uh, we will continue as long as we have the resources. Let me reiterate, we are a part of a big team here at the City of Denver, and we are all working to address this crisis. But at the end of the day, it comes down to individuals who have resources putting them forward. And so that's why I would also ask for those who have vacant apartment buildings, vacant motels, vacant hotels, vacant dorms, if there is an opportunity that we can get that activated, please email housingstability at denvergov.org. And if you as an individual at home are thinking about how you can donate and support this effort, I would reiterate the mayor's point that we want you to go to milehighunitedway.org slash COVID relief. Again, this is time for us to rise up, Denver. We have a lot of needs to help those who may be in need here. Yes. Uh, we we are working towards uh, more testing sites, but you know we we can't wait for that in terms of how we make our decisions, right? We can't wait for positive test results to come back to inform our decisions. Uh, that that's taking too much time. Resources are limited. Uh, we've mentioned a number of those. We're working to fulfill that gap, but in the meantime, we're providing some very strict. Uh, and, and a lot of clarity to the guidance that we're offering people in terms of how they can uh, isolate themselves, even in shelter settings. So we're working on that. Maybe one more question and we'll call it. What's going to happen to the city council if we go the Victoria and Mayor Pete Cancel? Uh, well, what's, the question is what's going to happen with city council and, and we uh, considering uh, counseling tonight. First of all, that's the call of the president of the city council, um, as you know. Um, and I know they have modified their schedule and their uh, community or public uh, interaction. So I understand that they have canceled their uh, public uh, comment period um, and minimized uh, you know, the, the, the opportunity for the public to congregate in, in the chamber so they can conduct their business. I believe also they have modified, if not canceled, many of their committee meetings as a result of uh, some of our actions. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you for being here.